Greetings one and all and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. I'm going to be doing a little something different with today's video, a throwback of sorts. Not only is it a great excuse to put some sort of content on standby for one of those weeks when I just don't feel like putting in the work on a new video, but I also thought you'd get some kicks out of seeing the very early beginnings of what would eventually become Tom's Hit Parade. Back when I was really uncomfortable in front of the camera and had crappy lighting and even crappier video editing software, not to mention different glasses and slightly darker hair. Anyway, the original uploads of the footage you're about to see, in which I discuss my 20 favorite albums of 2014, by the way, a list that mostly holds up, interestingly enough, uh, had been lingering at the bottom of my YouTube channel ever since I first uploaded them in January of 2015. Uh, don't bother looking for them now, because if you're seeing this, that means I've consigned them to their well-deserved digital purgatory. But I hope that these videos are new to most of you, even though I do encourage you to check out all my past videos. I've actually wanted to do this for quite a while now, uh, ever since I found out several months ago that, against all odds, I still had the raw video files on my hard drive. So now that I've got much better tools at my disposal, I decided it was the perfect opportunity to take that footage, brighten up the picture, tighten up the flow, such as it is, uh, and I may even add some snarky text commentary from my present day self. So anyway, I invite you to grab some popcorn, sit back, and get ready to laugh and to cry and to kiss 20 minutes goodbye. Embrace the cringe. Hi, my name is Tom. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am a huge music fan, as probably evidenced by the wall of CDs next to me here. Um, I used to run a music blog on the web. It's, uh, I believe it's Rotting Carcass is still out there somewhere. Uh, hasn't been updated in probably four years. Uh, but uh, I thought about, since I just got a new video camera for Christmas, I thought maybe I would start, uh, maybe I'd start in on it again, you know, posting two or three minute uh, music reviews in video form. Um, and so see how that goes, maybe one a week or so. Uh, but I just thought I'd kick it off big by uh, presenting my 20 favorite albums of 2014 countdown. Uh, so, uh, let's get started, why don't we? Um, it was a huge year for, year for music. Um, a lot of stuff from artists I haven't heard of before, and some from artists that I had heard of. So, uh, uh, it was hard to narrow it down to 20, believe me. Uh, so, let's get started with some honorable mentions. Uh, albums that were, uh, not good enough to rank, but uh, too good to go without mentioning. Uh, first of all, American Authors their debut album, Oh What a Life. Uh, Bette Midler, It's the Girls, um, a tribute album to uh, 60s girl groups. Fantastic. I didn't expect much of it, but I should have known better than, than to do that from Miss M. Uh, Magic, their debut album, Don't Kill the Magic. The single that everybody uh, loves, um, Rude. Uh, that to me was the least, my least favorite uh, song on this album, so... Uh, that was a big surprise. I love that one. And uh, Neon Trees, Pop Psychology, a uh, fantastic album from a group that I'd never tried until this past year, so uh, very good. And Sam Smith, In the Lonely Hour, uh, excellent album. Got a lot of attention and, in my opinion, it was well deserved. So uh, now on to the actual countdown. Number 20. Now uh, these guys pretty much cannot can't not be on my countdown uh, basically any year that they release an album. Uh, I've been enjoying them for almost all of their 28 years. A fantastic contemporary jazz group. This is their 18th studio album and their 21st release overall, uh, counting uh, live albums, compilations, and so forth. Uh, their best days are behind them, in my opinion, but still, it, I've been too much of a fan for too long to, uh, to stop liking them. Number 20 is Fountain of Youth by The Rippingtons featuring Russ Freeman. Uh, number 19. Uh, I was in a, uh, a store up in Portland last December. We're talking December of 2013 when I first heard this album on the, uh, on the speakers. And I was crushed when I found out that it was an advanced copy and I couldn't buy it for another, what turned out to be another four months. But I didn't waste a minute when it dropped finally and uh, uh, it was worth every moment of the wait. Uh, it's uh, the debut by an Australian synth rocker's Strange Talk, Castaway. That is my 19th favorite album of 2014. Uh, 
number 18, I wanted to rank this one higher. I really did uh, because this guy's a, a local boy, uh, founder of the university's uh, acapella, men's acapella group. Um, so, I, I mean, I was absolutely amazed when I saw it on the Amazon's uh, uh, upcoming music list. I had no idea he was putting out an album, let alone on a major label. And uh, yeah, it was every bit as good as I had hoped it would be. Uh, but I mean, there's just so much good music this year that uh, unfortunately I couldn't rank it higher than I did. Number 18, uh, this is guy is a one-man band. He makes every sound with his head, basically. Uh, his mouth, his, his voice box, uh, uh, except for a few uh, collaborations with well-known uh, artists. Every sound that you hear is coming from him. Peter Hollins, my number 18 favorite album of the year. Excellent debut. Uh, number 17. I really did not want to like this one. I really wanted to hate this album. Uh, just because whenever a rocker puts down his guitar and uh, switches to pop or R&B music, I tend to be disappointed. You know, I think that the artist is just, you know, following a trend or, or trying to sell more records because his last album didn't sell all that well. Uh, but I don't know why I think that, because I like pop as much as I like rock. As I like rock so, uh, But I, there's no denying that this guy does what he does really well. Um, as soon as I heard the sound clips, I just couldn't resist. I basically had to buy it. So uh, number 17 is Nick Jonas's solo album, latest solo album. Excellent R&B pop. Uh, now, despite what I just said about Nick Jonas, um, I do love it when an artist kind of uh, shows a completely different side to their obvious talent. Uh, much like Queen Latifah did uh, several years ago with her two um, her two album detour into singing, uh, as opposed to her usual rap. Um, and as for as for the other half of this pairing, I mean, who calling themselves a serious music fan cannot love this guy, living legend. Uh, and as if that weren't enough, uh, it's a f just a fun collection of old songs, uh, old standards. Some of them were off the beaten path stuff that you just don't hear very often. So uh, my number sixteen favorite album of the year is Tony Bennett and Lady Gaga's pairing for Cheek to Cheek. Beautiful, lovely album. Now, number 15. Um, this is a Norwegian DJ producer who's been working for several years, uh, working his magic for several years, but he just put out his uh, full, first full-length solo album. Uh, it's just, it's mostly instrumental, and it's just full of fun, upbeat, synthy, deliciousness. Uh, it, it reminds me of some of the more energetic New Age uh, music that I listened to back in the early 90s. Um, and I really hope we see more of the same from this guy. Todd Terria with It's Album Time. That is my number 15 favorite album of 2014. Uh, number 14 almost fell under my radar. Uh, these guys, it's a supergroup featuring Chesterfield King's bassist Andy Babiuk, uh, drummer Clem Burke from Blondie, uh, the Cars guitarist Elliot Easton and Wally Palmer of The Romantics. Uh, and they get an assist from uh, the late keyboardist Ian McLoggan. I hope I've pronounced all those names correctly. Um, this is just good old garage rock that would sound at home in nearly any decade uh, from the 70s up to today. Uh, the debut album by The Empty Hearts. That is my number 15 favorite album of the year. Excuse me, number 14. Uh, number 13, uh, classical pop is, uh, crossover is it's kind of all the rage right now, um, almost to the point of being cliche. You know, you've got uh, David Garrett, the violinist. You've got the uh, the piano-based combo, the piano guys. Uh, so it's it's almost a glut of that is uh, coming into the market, it seems. Uh, but this guy, he puts a new twist on it. He's uh, it's an obscure instrument from an obscure country. Uh, he is an accordionist from Lithuania. Now, accordion may be an acquired taste, but I've always enjoyed it, and uh, this guy makes it even more enjoyable. Uh, he does everything from traditional classical pieces by Vivaldi and Brahms to uh, pop hits by Lady Gaga and Katy Perry. Uh, this is the debut album by Martinus. That is my number 13 favorite album of the year. Now, what I love, something I love about music right now is how the 80s are such a huge influence on uh, a lot of today's artists. Uh, since I grew up in the 80s, that kind of strikes a chord with me. 
Uh, now this Amer American group reminds me of Berlin or maybe Tears for Fears if they had a female vocalist. Uh, but Nini Fabi's vocal resemblance to Paula Abdul in a few songs, uh, it worried me at first, but I've really grown to like this album. Uh, well, obviously with its place in my countdown. Uh, number 12 is uh, the debut album by Hearts, spelled H-A-E-R-T-S. Uh, number 11. Yeah, we're getting close to the top 10. Uh, number 11. This guy's... Uh, this is another one that I, I wanted to rank higher, but like I said, there was so darn much good music this year. Um, this guy's first album was... It was just really good singer-songwriter pop. Uh, his second album, uh, he took a turn and, and did uh, kind of a reggae meets folk vibe, which was really good. And uh, so I was looking forward to this new, al new album just as much to hear the songs themselves as to hear what direction he was going to take. Uh, and this uh, turns out he's, uh, he did a real soul funk kind of a vibe with this one. Um, and now I don't usually like uh, voices that are as scratchy and raspy as his, uh, but well, there's an exception to every rule. And my number 11 favorite album of 2014 is Caustic Love by Paolo Nutini. Okay, on we go to the top 10 of Tom's favorite albums of 2014. Uh, this, uh, this Irish band, I was fond of them from the beginning, uh, but I really disliked their last album. Uh, so when I saw a new one on the horizon, I pretty much ignored it. Uh, but one day, I decided, eh, listening to the sound clips wouldn't kill me, so I thought I'd give it a listen out of curiosity, and I was delighted to find none of the hip-hop influences that dominated their previous effort. Um, it has become my favorite album of theirs since their debut, in part because of the great lyrics. I mean, I don't know if I just didn't notice their lyrics uh, until now, or if they just hit their stride with them this time. But uh, my number 10 favorite album is No Sound Without Silence, uh, the latest album by The Script. Um, one key track to listen to on this one is No Good in Goodbye. Uh, the uh, word nerds of the world would uh, will appreciate the wordplay in that, uh, that song. Number nine. Um, this is one of a couple artists in my top ten that uh, I hadn't heard of until I saw the album in the record shop um, and decided to take a chance on it. Uh, needless to say, they kind of blew me away with their, their energetic tunes, their, their fun vocals and lyrics and just a great 80s vibe in their music. And uh, it didn't hurt that they had a mostly upbeat uh, mood on the album, too. I kind of uh, gravitate away from the uh, more depressing music. But uh, number nine uh, is Be Impressive by the Griswolds. Uh, right on Track is uh, one of the better songs on this album. Take a listen to that one. Uh, number eight. Uh, I've been a fan of this band since their debut uh, nearly 20 years ago. Uh, so I was positively giddy when I heard they were coming out with a new one this year, although I almost missed it. Um, but I'm glad I didn't. Their, their songs are as hooky as ever, and their lyrics are as thought-provoking as they always have been. And Kevin Griffin still got that same throaty voice that just put a spell on me all those years ago. Uh, the seventh album by Better Than Ezra, All Together Now, is my eighth favorite album of the year. Uh, the Great Unknown is one of the key tracks on that album. Check that one out. Uh, number seven. This is uh, my first real exposure to both of the groups, um, that uh, both of the component groups of this album. Uh, but I, I knew to expect the unexpected when I picked it up, uh, without listening to a note of it beforehand, by the way. Um, this one is literally all over the map. They sing their songs in Swedish, Japanese, English, and a couple other different uh, languages, too. Uh, and it has everything from pop music covers to show tunes to folk melodies and a few original songs. Um, if you like music you can't really put a label on, um, you can't miss this one. Uh, Dream a Little Dream by Pink Martini and the Von Trapps. And yes, that is the, the three uh, grandchildren of, the, of Maria Von Trapp, uh, inspiration for The Sound of Music. And uh, the title track, Dream a Little Dream, that's probably my favorite song on the album. Take a listen to that one. It's one of my favorite songs of all time, and the, the version they do of that is just superb. <clears throat> Number six. Now, rockabilly is pretty much a dead genre anymore. Its, uh, it's heyday was some 60 years ago, uh, so it's quite surprising to see it get picked up by a guy who's still in his 20s and is probably better known for his acting than his singing. 
But uh, when you realize that uh, he's basically basically idolized Brian Setzer his entire life, and if you've heard his previous two albums, um, you would understand, or it wouldn't surprise you, that he's fantastic at what he does, uh, including this. It was a, an eight-year wait uh, from his last album till this one, uh, but if I knew it was going to be this good, I would have waited even longer. Ready, Steady, Go by Drake Bell. That is my number six favorite album of 2014. Uh, Bitchcraft is a really good song that so it's one of his one of the singles off that. Uh, take a listen to that one. Uh, now into the top five. Here we go. Uh, here's another artist that I I hadn't even heard of until I saw the CD in the record shop. Uh, sometimes just looking at the cover art or the uh, track list on the back uh, will give me a strong hunch that I will enjoy the album, and the hunch paid off in spades with this one. Um, it's an album full of just effervescent fun throwback jazz from uh, from like the 40s, uh, basically the first half of the 20th century. Uh, it's so good that you'd swear that they were cryogenically frozen back in the 40s and revived a year ago to record this album. The Hot Sardines. Their debut album is my number five favorite album of the year. Uh, Honeysuckle Rose is an awesome song. It's, it's one of my favorites. Uh, and it's, uh, on this album especially, it's a good demonstration of both their instrumental ability and uh, the uh, vocal talents of the lead vocalist. She is fantastic. Um, number four, I have to admit I was not impressed with this act's debut album, uh, so when their follow-up came along I was hesitant, uh, but listening to the clips online changed all that. Uh, and it took me the longest time to figure out who they reminded me of, and it finally took an online review for it to dawn on me. The review referred to them, or described them as, a female version of the Everly Brothers. And that's exactly right. I mean, it's exactly who they sound like. The Everly, Everly Brothers is one of my favorite classic pop groups, so it made total sense that I'd like these, uh, uh, this act. Produced by T-Bone Burnett, uh, my number four favorite album of the year is Put Your Needle Down, The Sophomore Effort by The Secret Sisters. Uh, the, uh, one of the standout tracks on there is I Cannot Find a Way. Listen to that one. It'll probably sell you. Uh, okay, number three. Uh, this is yet another album that uh, an artist whose last album I thought was just okay, so uh, I wasn't paying any attention to what they were doing until I saw this album on the racks back in early December. Uh, nevertheless, I decided, well, mainly because it was less than $10, uh, I decided to go ahead and pick it up and give them a second chance. And uh, now take it from somebody like me who grew up in the 80s, um, I can say without hesitation that this is one of the most authentically 80s sounding albums that I've heard since that decade ended. Um, and when I say authentically, I mean, I'm not talking like the hit you over the head, outrageously 80s stuff that you hear on all these 80s compilations, you know, the songs that everybody knows that, that are used in all the, uh, the period nostalgia pieces on TV and, and whatnot. I'm talking about you turn on the radio on some average day in 85 or 86, you'd hear songs that are not unlike what you'd hear on this album. It's just the more subtle 80s influences, mainly. Um, but yeah, Talking Is Hard, the sophomore album by Walk the Moon. That is my number three favorite album of 2014. Um, one of the standout tracks on this one is called Sidekick. Take a listen to that. Uh, now, my runner-up. The success that this guy had in 2014 it totally made my year. Um, I've been a huge fan of his since his very first album, 31 years ago, and it took him 31 years to uh, get the top spot on the Billboard 200 charts, and I consider that a complete travesty. I mean, this guy, he lifts my spirits whenever I'm having a bad day, um, and it, it felt like a member of my own family had gone unappreciated for years uh, and finally got his due when he got all the accolades and stuff that he got this year. Um, the, my favorite parody on here is probably Inactive. It's a parody of Imagine Dragons, uh, Radioactive. And my favorite original is probably Lame Claim to Fame. Um, you, I'm sure you know who I'm talking about by now. Mandatory Fun, the latest effort by Weird Al Yankovic. That is my runner-up for favorite album of 2014. And now for those of you who know me, uh, and you know how much I love Weird Al, you're probably asking yourselves, so what could beat Weird Al for the top spot? Well, uh, and 
what's even more amazing is I, I didn't even know this guy existed a little over a year ago. Um, I was I was actually online looking for something to buy to take advantage of a shipping discount, of all things, when I happened upon this guy's uh, CD. Uh, so I, I looked him up on YouTube, listened to a few of his songs, and it's like every song that I heard of his I liked more than the last one I heard. So finally, after about five or six, I decided, okay, I just got to pick up all the all three of this guy's albums, uh, and I did. Uh, and well, his fourth album came out in April, uh, and even though I I already knew I was expecting a good album, this one just it blew my expectations completely out of the water. Um, he sounds like vintage Elton John on one track. Um, he does a totally modern EDM uh, you know dance song on another. It uh, has some great 80s sounds in a few songs. Uh, there's even a Calypso-like track. Uh, and a, a perfect jazz pop tune that sounds at home in any decade. Um, this album is so good, in fact, that not only is it my favorite album of 2014, but it's already firmly in my top 10 all-time favorite albums. Ladies and gentlemen, my favorite album of 2014 is Pompadour by Walter Hamill. Dutch jazz pop singer fantastic um uh key tracks standout tracks well basically all of them uh so i hope you enjoyed my favorite albums of 2014. Uh, i certainly did and i'm enjoying them more and more on my ipod uh, if you feel like commenting do so um and like i said uh, hopefully i will be uh bringing you a lot more um reviews you know just two minute three minute music reviews every week or so um so just uh, keep watching uh keep looking out uh keep on the lookout and and uh thank you for watching well how'd you like that trip down memory lane sorry you had to watch that that's 20 minutes you'll never get back right <laughs> in all seriousness that's it for this video i hope you did enjoy it and i appreciate the feedback whether about this video or anything on my channel or about music in general i'd love to hear from you in the comments section below I invite you to subscribe to my channel as well and check out my other past videos to see what you might have missed. I'm also on Twitter, and you can find a link to my Twitter feed in the description below, so check it out and follow along. Also, please take the time to visit my friends and fellow YouTubers channels, which are also linked to in the description below. They're all great at what they do, and they're very much worth your attention. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.